In this video, we'll take a look at the SiteDocs mobile application. This app is available for Apple and Android smartphones and tablets, but for the sake of this video, we'll use a tablet. Other than the larger screen, there are no major differences between using a tablet or using a phone. If you haven't downloaded the SiteDocs mobile app yet, you can scan the QR codes on screen to do that right now. When you first download the app from the App Store, you'll be asked for permission for SiteDocs to send you notifications. This allows for push notifications from chat, as well as notification badges inside the app to let you know if there's a chat message, follow-up form, or scheduled item waiting for you. Next, you'll need to sign in with your username and password. If you don't have one yet, you can contact your administrator to set up your credentials for you. The first time that you log into SiteDocs, you'll have to download all of your documentation. This includes fillable form templates, resource files, and core audit forms if your company's in Canada. This will take a few minutes, but it'll only happen the first time you open the application. The first screen you're going to see is a list of locations that are visible to you. These locations are how SiteDocs organizes all of the documents that you've signed in your SiteDocs account. So all of them will always be tied to the location that you signed them in. If you don't see the location name that should be on your list, you can contact your administrator and they can make that location visible for you. If you have a long list of locations, you can even use the search bar at the top of the list to find the location that you're looking for. If you have the right permission profile, you can also use the Add Location button to add a new location profile on the fly from your mobile device. If you ever need to change your location, you can select the GPS pin icon to see your list again. Now that I'm all signed in, let's take a look at the home page. First is the account section. Under this heading, we have our settings, support, and sync menus. In the settings menu, you can choose if you want to save photos that you take in your SiteDocs app to your device's photo gallery as well. You can also change your language and find information about your app version. Under support, you'll find a link to the SiteDocs Help Center, a link to the tutorial for this app, which is the video you're watching right now, and a handy button to help you contact the wonderful SiteDocs support team. The export button will send your app data to the SiteDocs developers in case of stuck items or a bug. In the sync menu, you can find how many pending items you have waiting to upload if you're offline. There's also a button to force a sync, which will cause your SiteDocs app to check with the administrator panel and see if there have been any changes to your account. This menu also holds your download options, which is where you can choose whether you want your downloadable content to be downloaded over your cellular data or only on Wi-Fi. Once you've made that choice, you then have options for how much of each type of content you want available on your device at all times. Each section will give you an option for download on demand or download for offline viewing. On demand means that the data will be stored online and will only be available when you have an active internet connection. Offline viewing means that you'll have the data available to you at all times, but it will take up space on your device's hard drive. The sections that you have available are signed forms, photos and signature images, resource PDFs, and certification images. And if you make any changes here, don't forget to select apply to save when you're done. At the bottom of this page, you can even see how much storage is being used by each type of item in your SiteDocs app. If you're using multi-account login, you can even see the storage details for each other account. Finally, the logout button in the top right corner will log you out of your account or give you the option to switch accounts if you use multi-account login. Next, we have the to-do list. This is where all scheduled items are stored. Under Today, you'll find all items that are due today or overdue, so you can easily access them, fill them out, and sign them. Next is Upcoming. This section holds all scheduled forms or signatures that are due in the future. If you want to get a head start on some of your upcoming items, 
you can do that here. Next is the shortcuts list. First, we have signed documents. This holds all the recently signed forms for the current location, and they can be sorted by date or by form name. Next is the All Follow-up section. This is where all of your pending and finished follow-up forms are stored. We have a separate video all about how these forms work and how to use them, so we'll skip that for now, but feel free to check out that video in our Help Center. Last is the Locations Nearby feature. This gives you a place to quickly find your closest emergency locations using Google Maps. This is a feature we hope you never have to use, but it is here should the need arise. Simply select the location type that you need to view the Google Maps page. Keep in mind that this is one of the few features that does require an active internet connection to use. Okay, now that we've explored the home page, let's sign a new form. First, select the forms icon at the bottom of the app. Now you can either scroll through the list of forms to find one that you want, or use the search bar at the top to narrow down your list. We'll select the form that we want and select New to start a new form from scratch. At the top of the form, you'll see information about your company, including your company name, your location name, and your date and time. Next, we can see the label field. In this case, it's a fillable text box where you can manually enter identifying information like a job number or a crew name. In other cases, your administrator may have selected a predetermined label field. In that case, this field won't be visible and you don't have to worry about it. It'll be filled in automatically. In this case, I'll just enter my job number. Now let's start filling out the form. First, we have a worker name field where you can select one or many workers that are filling out this form together. In this case, it's just me. Next, we have a long answer box where you can enter the address of where you're currently working, and then a number only field for an emergency phone number, a select time item to state the time when we started the form, a yes no question asking if there are any subcontractors working with me today, and a button to drop a GPS pin for my current location. Finally, I have a button to view a PDF file that contains a handy map of my current site. The next section of my form is a very simple hazard assessment. It contains some drop-down lists of hazard and risk ratings, and a reminder to flag the hazards for corrective action if I need to. Again, we have a great feature for this kind of thing called follow-up forms, which is covered in its own video in the Help Center. So we'll skip it again for now, but feel free to check out that video later. Lastly, there's a checkbox to indicate if a corrective action was assigned. This section is repeatable, so I can duplicate it and fill out the questions a few times if there's more than one hazard that I'm encountering. The last section of my form is collapsible, so I can select the arrow on the right side of the title to expand the section if I need to. This section has a simple pass-fail question and an image showing a harness diagram that I can draw on to show any problem areas. Finally, I can even attach a photo of this harness using the camera icon or the Add Photos button at the bottom of the form. Now that I've taken a picture of my harness, I can add a date and time stamp, a GPS stamp, and even draw on this photo to show the broken item and use the text tool to identify what the problem is. To finish the form, I can select Sign and Save to add a signature and send the form through to the administrator panel. Once the form is signed, if I have the right permission profile, I can even choose to request a signature from another user on this form. Just select Request Signature, then choose who you need the signature from. Next, choose a due date and time, and select Schedule to send a request to that user. Please note that if you choose someone without mobile access, they will not be notified by SiteDocs in any way so you'll have to follow up with them in person or in another way. Next, let's take a look at the resource section. This is a great place to keep all of your documents that don't require fillable answers. For instance, your toolbox talks or your safety manual. From here, we can select the toolbox talk that we're looking for. We can open the document 
and read the whole thing. I can even pinch to zoom in if I need to. When I'm done, I can add my signature, just like a form, and use the Save and Add Another button for several signatures, in case there's a full crew reading the same document with me. If you'd like to email any of your finished documents directly from your application, you can select the Share icon in the top right-hand corner of the app, which will open a new window with the finished version of your document. From this view, you can email the form, download the PDF to your device, or even print it from here. The next tab is your Worker tab. This is where you can find your Worker profile, and if you have the right permission profile, you can see the names of anyone else assigned to your location as well. When I select my name from the list, I'm taken to my personal profile. From this page, I can select the information and view my contact information, and even add a profile photo from my camera or my existing photos. Next, I can select certifications to view my existing certifications, and if I have the right permissions, I can even add a new cert directly from my application and have it added to my SiteDocs account. Lastly, on this page, I can see previously signed to see all the forms that I've signed in the past, organized by date and by form name. The last tab in the app is the chat tab. This is where messages can be sent to other workers in your SiteDocs account. We have a whole video about how chat works in our help center, so I won't go into too much detail here. I just wanted to remind you that this tab requires a constant internet connection. So if you're offline, it won't update right away. And that's the whole SiteDocs mobile app in a nutshell. If you have any questions about your mobile app or anything else to do with your SiteDocs program, please reach out to our incredible support team at support at sitedocs.com.